Good evening, everybody. It is Sunday, August 6th, I believe. Um, I don't know, it's about almost 5 o'clock p.m. now. Uh, finally had some time to wind down a little bit and uh, figured I'd make a quick video and uh, give you guys a tour of the new greenhouse that we've had up. Uh, there's been some requests to, to see what's going on in there and uh, I think we'll, we'll oblige that today and uh, I'll take you on a quick tour. And uh, so let me switch the camera around here. Okay, here we go. Whoops, don't mind. So here's the greenhouse. Um, we made it with uh, some lumber and some uh, 16 foot cattle panels. Um, it's 32 feet long by 10 feet wide. And it's just over six foot tall, I believe. I never really took the measurement, but I can stand up straight and actually uh, extend my arm above my head and I can touch the roof. So, so it's a comfortable height. Uh, we like it. Um, we built it with two by fours, some two by sixes, made a nice door. It's a um, four foot wide door to get in, hopefully with a, like a wheelbarrow or something we figured if we needed to. Um, like the nice wide door to get in in case we want to carry big pots in or, or bags of uh, soil and such. Um, so, so there's that. We built it in three, it's kind of divided it into three sections. We had an issue, um, I don't know if you can see, I'll take you to the, to the front here. The bottom of it, we built with uh, um, pressure treated two by tens, um, two 16 foot long pieces bound together and such um, to, to extend the height of the, uh, of the greenhouse some. Um, upon doing that, what we didn't do was put any stakes in the ground or any kind of way to keep the, uh, the, the walls from bowing out from the pressure of the uh, the cattle panels. I never gave it a thought until we started putting them on and it was bowing these walls out pretty harsh. So what we came up with was uh, kind of this divider system. Um, you can kind of see it in the front where we built the, we put some uh, two by fours across the bottom and then we put the, you know, extended our walls up a little bit, made the door frame all the way around. Um, this kind of helps support the, uh, you know, the cattle panels from wibble wobbling around. We had uh, 12 foot uh, long two by fours in between. Um, and then we built them on, again, these dividers here, two by four going across the greenhouse with another two by 10 um, holding it up. Kinda kind of made it to, to, you know, keep the structure straight. As you can see, it's, it's pretty sturdy now. Um, we were afraid in the winter time, we get uh, some heavy snows overnight up here in Vermont. Um, and, you know, always concerned if we couldn't uh, get out here in time to clean that snow off. So we wanted some support. Some friends actually mentioned to do that. We thought it was a great idea. So this should help us uh, keep it upright in the in the winter time. Um, so with having these up, it actually divides the greenhouse into three sections. We got the front section by the front door, this middle section, and then if we go uh, beyond here, if I don't trip and fall, we've got another section here. So our thoughts were maybe this fall we can. Uh, put some plastic along these uh, you know archway here and in this door and in the section behind us um, and keep the center part enclosed so we can heat it during the night and maybe extend our growing season uh, up until the snow flies um, because right now as it is the greenhouse here um, the temperature gets really high during the day if we don't open these windows and keep the fan going um, it could reach over 100 degrees during the day in the full sun so um, in the evening though, which actually kind of surprised us, is whatever the temperature drops to outside, the greenhouse falls down to that temperature, um, if maybe a couple de degrees above. So that was a little disappointing. Doesn't affect anything that we're growing in the, in the summer here and such, um, but in the fall, it might be an issue. So we're gonna try enclosing the center section, like I said, a little heat during the, during the day, uh, evening, and um, see if we can, uh, Take care of it that way um you can see the construction it's made with uh these are 16 foot long by i believe uh, i don't remember if they're 55 inches or 50 i want to say they're 50 inches tall technically if you had them you know as the cattle panels they're uh they're built in um actually you can't really see there we go we took the ends of the cattle panels and butted them down against some some two by four supports that we put in um, here and there just to keep the height of that 2x4 up on the wall and then we uh, we stapled them in with uh, um, some fencing staples along. They seem to keep it pretty well 
and supported. Uh, I know I mentioned with the walls blowing out from the pressure, that's why we built these partitions here and they seem to, to hold that pretty good. You'll see uh, that you can tell there is pressure on them by, you know, if you stand on, on this board, it actually kind of moves the walls. Um, so, so they are holding the pressure of the, of the uh, cattle panels pretty well. Uh, and then what we did is we just zip tied the cattle panels together once they were lined up um, all the way down through. We had to build it uh, on the inside. Of course, any of the sharp edges had to be protected. So we used just uh, pipe insulators from a local hardware store, put that around the ends, um, and that protected the plastic on the ends from being cut up by the, the metal on the cattle panels. We did on the end have to overlap two of the cattle panels by three little sections here. Uh, I didn't want to go through all the BS of uh, cutting a cattle panel down and such. I really didn't have the equipment at the time. Didn't want to mess with it. We wanted to get it up as soon as possible. So it just adds a little extra port anyways. Um, it really didn't bother anything. Uh, the plastic on the top of the greenhouse, I want to say, and I'll have to check that. I want to say it's at least the six millimeter um, greenhouse plastic, if not the nine. I can't remember what we went with. I'd have to check the paperwork, um, but it seems to be what all the local greenhouses in our area go with. Um, so, and so far, knock on wood, it's uh, it's been holding up pretty well. Um, we haven't had any hail or anything like that this year, except for pea-sized hail, and it really didn't bother anything. Uh, larger hail, you know, it might be an issue. Um, don't know how the snow and ice will handle it this year, but uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed and to see how it works. Um, the floor. It's kind of dirty now because we had all that flooding and such, but it's made with uh, the thick uh, driveway mat, they called it. It's a woven kind of plastic material. Um, seems to be pretty rugged. It's holding up well. Uh, we like it so far. It keeps any of the weeds growing out. You might have a few bits of grass popping here and there. Um, right now, of course, when we put it up, it was nice. It was pristine looking and, and clean. Um, again, we had those big, uh, big rainstorms uh, this July. And uh, the greenhouse itself actually, and in, in this front corner here, because the way the driveways are built, all the water kind of drains down through here. We had like a river going through the bottom of the driveway. We had like six inches of water um, that kind of dammed up inside the walls of the greenhouse and such. So it got the, the floor all mucky, but it's dry enough. We can sweep it up when we want to and such. It's not really a you know, bother. It's just more of a visual pain in the butt. Um, but uh, other than that, I mean, uh, so far, we're happy with it, uh, as you can see real quick. Um, I can show you some of the quick plants that we have growing in here. We have tomatoes on this side. Um, first two are cherry tomatoes, all the other ones all the way till the far corner, which would be another cherry tomato. These are all your regular, um, I think that they're, they're the, like the Roma style um, sauce kind of tomatoes. See, they, they kind of grow in a almost a pear shape instead of like the traditional round tomatoes she might have some of the regular round tomatoes in here there's a whole variety i think there's like six different kinds in here that we've tried um, um so what we did we have over i want to say it's either 40 or 44 tomatoes growing in here uh, with the exception of the cherry tomatoes which are grown in one per pot we have um, two tomatoes per 10 gallon pot in here growing um along with some uh I wonder if I can get in to show you guys quick. There's some, you know, if you can see inside there, kind of in behind it, right here, we've got basils, one basil growing in with each plant, and uh, a thing of marigolds, actually. Let me see if I can, don't mind the camera work. I don't get anybody seasick. I don't know if you can see, there's the marigolds and the basils growing in with the tomatoes, kind of doing a companion planting thing. They've been working out good, um, so, so we're happy with that. Um, I can go in detail more what we did in another video to try to keep this short. Um, in the front, these smaller pots in front of the tomatoes, these are all hot peppers. There's cayennes, there's habaneros, there's scotch bonnets. Um, we like to grow those. Um, the cayennes especially, not only for their medicinal property, but we use those a lot for, for seasonings and such. Um, in between this section here, if you see this different plant here, that's uh, my, my Maypop passion flower. That's a uh, Passiflora incarnata, I believe they call it. It, uh, it, um, you can use the leaves and you can use the flowers, which I, I don't have any flowers open right now, but she's, she's budding again and it flowers profusely, and then it forms these fruits right, 
like this. I think they'll get a little bit bigger. Um, and there's there's a there's a couple more in there that they've grown. Super medicinal properties with this plant. Um, it's a um, very calming. Um, if anybody has anxiety or anything like that, you can make uh, teas or tinctures with it. Uh, and that helps that. Uh, going on, more hot peppers. I believe these are the Scotch bonnets and such. Um, she's got a fish pepper growing down here. Again, these are all in three gallon pots. Next to it, these five here, actually six, are the stevia or stevia plants, depending on how you pronounce them, that I started from seed. Um, they're super sweet leaf plant. Uh, I think they're like a hundred times sweeter than sugar. I think they say something like that. Um, super cool plant to have to mix in with teas. In here we've got a pineapple sage plant. We've got a toothache plant here. I'll go in depth in some other videos on, on what they are and how to use them. Uh, Indian lemongrass that's grown here. Of course, there's another cherry tomato growing right here in this section. Um, a tamarillo tree, which eh, mixed reviews on right now. We'll probably talk about that in a different video. Um, we've got a roselle hibiscus here. Some uh, lemon verbenas, which is one of my favorite herbs. Nice and mm, fresh lemony um, smelling and tasting herb. Super good in teas and such. I've got bananas. Um, these are the Dwarf Cavendish bananas. I could probably make another video about them, explaining what I'm doing with those. But these are all the pups off of that one, one tree. Anybody wants a Dwarf Cavendish banana who's in the uh, uh, upper Vermont area, um, let me know. I can hook you up with one. All except for this one. This one's reserved for a good friend of ours. Um, he's been waiting on this for a while, so so that one's set aside. Um, behind that is. Uh, um, sweet potatoes. They're Georgia Jet sweet potatoes is what they call them. They're supposed to be uh, pretty hardy for this area. We've got those growing in 10 gallon pots. They're looking super happy and uh, going on. They're a little flat right now because I just watered. Um, got a miracle berry tree that's growing. I can explain that in another video at some point. Um, behind this against this wall and this trellis, another one of my passion flowers. I think I'll do a video about the three passion flowers that I'm growing right now and then we can explain what they are. Save some time in this one. Um, this section here in the center, that's all my citrus trees. Uh, I'll do a separate video on those because they're super cool. They're getting fruits on them and such. Pretty excited about that. It's uh, been a long time in coming to get them to this, this condition. So, so uh, we'll, we'll do another separate one uh, sometime this week, hopefully, about that. Um, some more small in these three-gallon pots. Some smaller hot peppers. Uh, they're a little behind getting them in the ground, uh, but they've actually doubled their size. They might do something, we'll see. Uh, there's still time. But, uh, and then here, we've got another guava. That's uh, that's uh, my Barbie pink guava. She's getting some flower buds on it, um, possibly a fruit. I'll do a video on her explaining her more because it's one of my favorite trees. It's been a challenge, but she's come a long way. Um, there's the other passion flower. We've got some holy basils here. Um, one of my favorite basils, they're just, just uh, so fragrant, uh, fruity smelling, makes a wicked calming tea, um, very, very medicinal. Uh, in front of that is a fig tree. I could probably do something explaining those eventually. Uh, another one of my citruses, another roselle. Um, I've got two things, little 10 gallon containers of popcorn, um, Tom Thumb popcorn, they call it. It's supposed to be a little miniature one that grows. Um, that's uh, dated back to the 1860s, I believe, so that's kind of cool. There's some more holy basils, um, and in here, We've got some eggplants. Um, and then in front of in front here is uh, one of my favorite trees, dwarf ever bearing mulberry. Um, I'll, I'll do a quick video on her sometime, explaining her. And then uh, we've got an okra, and we've got uh, some kind of, I can't remember the the name, just uh, slips my mind right now. But that's another kind of sweet potato, and. Um, you're supposed to be able to eat the, the greens on those. They're supposed to be very, very nutritious. Uh, we haven't tried them yet, but we're planning on this week. So so we'll do an update on those at some point. And then uh, just have uh, my red mistletoe cactus here. That's a kind of cool one too. And uh, in a nutshell, that's what we've got growing in the greenhouse right now. It's uh, getting towards evening now. So I'm going to take and uh, start shotting her down to preserve some heat for the night and uh, continue on in the next, you know, the next day. And, uh, Hopefully our growing season continues. You've got some more flowers up here, the echinacea, my bougainvillea. Tanya's got a, uh, oh, geez, I can't even remember what it's called now. Yeah, one of those big spiky things. <laughs> uh, artichoke, that's what it is. It's an artichoke. Uh, they're, they're real, they almost feel like a thistle. Those leaves are sharp and such. I don't know if that'll do anything or not, but uh, it gets starting getting cold out. We can get her in the uh, greenhouse and keep going through and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, keep carrying on. 
But uh, yeah, so there's a quick tour. Um, we kept it around 15 minutes, so so that's good. Um, hopefully it didn't bore anybody with it. So if anybody has any uh, questions, running around here, here we go. Questions or comments or suggestions on anything we could do to improve on the greenhouse, um, just let us know. And it's a work in progress. Uh, so far, so good. We're happy with the outcome of it this year. We got a few more improvements we want to do on it, but uh, it's come a ways and it's helped us this year, especially with uh, we've had such a such a wet summer right now. It's been terrible. Um, a lot of people's gardens are suffering. So so we're fortunate. I uh, feel blessed to have this. Take the time and the you know the expense to put this up. This is uh, way cheaper than putting up a you know a commercially purchased uh, greenhouse. Something this size. You you know you're talking at least six grand if not more. So so we're happy with it. We we've, we've put a fraction of that into this. And uh, I suggest anybody who wants a cheap greenhouse, these are easy to put up. They're simple. Um, you know if anybody wants any any help with them. Or, or suggestions from what we've learned uh, just uh, let us know we'll be more than happy to help and again any questions comments concerns uh, feel free to comment and uh, hope you like the video and uh, until next time uh, everybody have a great evening looks like there's more rain coming this week um, so everybody take care if we have any more flooding especially here in Vermont we've been having a lot going on um, the southern park just got nailed pretty hard at the beginning of this weekend and such so uh, they yeah, are our, our thoughts are with them uh, we went through that in July with the flooding and such. So um, I hope everybody stay safe and uh, stay dry. And until next time, everybody have a great day. Take care.